Welcome. Today is Thursday, February 9, 2023. And this is the City of Maplewood Heritage Preservation Commission meeting for February. Uh, first, we'll do a roll call. Oh, wait. Let's start with uh, some good news. Um, Laura, do you have any good news you want to share? It's warming up a little outside. <laughs> okay, that's great. That that means 37 degrees. Is that what it was? That's Minnesota warm. Okay, good. David, have any anything? No. Road <laughs> not complete. That? No, I don't want to complain about okay. the city while I'm working for the city. Okay. <laughs> okay, Richard, do you have any uh, good news for us? I didn't see anybody at the uh, bus meeting, but that's all right. Everything else is going good. Okay, that's good. And they were all complying. Barbara, do you have any good news for us? Not really, only that I've stayed on my feet and haven't slipped on the ice. That's good. Can you tell us the uh, schools that in Maplewood that you've uh, helped since you've been here in Maplewood? <laughs> well, um, mainly um, some of the elementaries you know working with the title one good yeah all right that's mm -hmm. good david do you have any any uh work assignments these days this teaching <coughs> teaching <laughs> you're you're done teaching I'm waiting for the golf course though. okay <laughs> joe do you have any good news for us yeah my eagles are in the super bowl this weekend <laughs> oh, 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 oh man uh -huh. oh. We could have a whole meeting on that, couldn't we? <laughs> Congratulations. Can we get that we edited out of the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We'll take a roll call here. The chair is here. Bob Cardinal. Richard. I'm here. John. John's absent. John Gasper is absent. Uh, David Hughes. Here. Barbara. Curran. Here. Uh, Laura. Uh, Nikki is not here. Councilmember Nikki Valencio. Uh, staff Joe Sharon. He's here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's still at the hockey game. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on to uh, approval agenda. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Anyone? Feel free to speak up. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as prepared? Motion to approve the motion to approve the agenda as prepared. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, David. All right, we have an agenda. Uh, we are going to. I believe we need a vote on that. Oh, say that again. I believe we need, we have a motion and a second, but we don't have a vote. We, we don't have a vote, okay. Okay, we'll take a vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Approved. Uh, any disagreement here? No, all approved. Okay. Move to uh, approve the minutes as prepared. Any changes to the minutes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes as prepared? They forgot one thing. That Bob Cardinal read the whole agenda for last week. Okay, that's good. We'll put that in there. All right. Uh, motion, Laura? Yeah, so motion. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Richard seconds it to approve the minutes as prepared with the addition of uh, the agenda being read. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 We have an agenda. Uh, we are going to, and the minutes are approved, go to new business. Joe Sharon. Okay, so for this one, I want to give uh, kudos to Commissioner Koski, who has painstakingly gone through several inventories, both at SHPO and within our own city, to figure out and start mapping potentially historic properties. There is a robust list, as you can see in your packet. And at this point, I'm going to turn the floor over to Commissioner Koski, mm -hmm to uh, show us 
potentially what this would look like in, in a mapping system. And this also goes to um, goal one for this year, which is uh, use the context study and SHPO data to identify potentially historic inventory and locations within the city of Maplewood. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start with this map that we received. I don't know if people can actually see it. All we have is a physical copy <laughs> of this map. There's no digital data. Um, but this is something, it's called a historic properties map. Um, so it's a list we got out of a report from the city that kind of reflects on a historic context study, but this isn't part of the context study. Some, some individual put this together. I don't know who, um, but they did a really good job. And it's very thorough, but it has symbols on here that aren't explained, like different colors for either different things, but there's no legend to explain why they're different colors. The assumption is that in another, at one of the first commission meetings we did. Okay, do you know where the data for this might be? Like, it seems that there's files and stuff on these. The city's supposed to have them somewhere. <laughs> we did, um, Joe asked the building office about their, um, what the, what the properties list is, and I guess they only keep a list of just, like, National Register. So their list is the barn. Well, ac actually, okay. they do have a full list, but the only properties they update are properties that are flagged in the system that are designated historic. So they have the list that they use, but it's only it, the, the only ones that tend to get updated when development happens, unless we update it on our end. So I think this will, what this will help us do is we'll be able to update it on our end and we'll have a database uh, of that. I think this was created by our colleague Chad Burgo, okay. who was uh, then our GIS expert back in 2009. Uh, but that's kind of where we left off. But I think this is some great work, uh, especially now that we're in a system where everything is mapped and pinpointed. And, and, I, and at this point, I would request if you want to kind of just give us yeah, the, I can get into that. What we're looking at here and uh, and just the overview. We don't have to get into every every property at this point, but just an overview of the progress you made and if you could tell us some of the next steps, that would be terrific. Yeah. Um, hey, Joel, there's uh, two Richard, corrections Richard. that I want to pitch. One, page one, the Broomtrop family farm, that's the one that they moved up onto County Road D, which they still have it on 2980 Whiteberry Avenue. Correct. That's the Chabot list you're looking at. So that doesn't matter as far as accuracy. And yes, what the, I would say, uh, Richard, is... Church of St. Je uh, Jim's, or James. And it's, what about it? It's, you have it listed at 380 Roselawn. Mm -hmm. That's St. Jerome's. Okay, mm -hmm. I would I would refer you to the packet that we sent out last Friday. Or is this in the packet? Yeah, it's in the packet. Okay. Yeah. So St. Jerome's also has gone by St. James, and Shippo has St. James in their list, but the inventory form for it has both names on it. But when it comes to the Bruntrup Farm, yeah, in the Shippo list that you're looking at, that is referring to the original location, but. Yes, our inventory refers to it now and it's moved location. All I was doing was pointing out the errors as I went through the packet this week that you guys sent out. Yeah, that's fine. So this, I wanted to pass this back because I know people got to see it and I think it helps to compare when you see this map that's put together and then the final map. So I'll move over to the computer then. Okay, I don't know if the mic is picking me up, but um, so this is the ArcGIS Pro application. So it's just, a G this is me starting up a GIS Geo database for historic structures in the city. Um, the only layer I have in it currently is just this, these points, besides the red being the boundary of the city, just to help give a de definition of what we're looking at. Uh, so we got the city boundary, and then all of the points are the historic structures. And these points are, as full and complete as I can get it. Everything that has an address or some sort of location on it is in here. Unfortunately, like you'll see at the end of that list I just passed around, the last like five or so don't have an address. There's no way I can know where those are, um, unless we do have some sort of 
files that are kept on them, which is why I was asking, because some of these I need more information to figure out where they're supposed to go. Um, but this gives us a general lowdown of, of what all we have in a city. Um, I can pull up, I can pull this up. Um, this is the attribute table. So this is basically where I've incorporated um, all of the data that Shippo had on these structures and that that particular list has on these structures. So this first column is the inventory number that Shippo has. Um, then the name Shippo or the local list has, the address, and it, a lot of these I've fixed because the addresses have often mistyped. Um, a report citation, if they're mentioned in a cultural resources report, so we can page back to that. Uh, and then the status column is what I've done to look back through old, old and current satellite imagery to see what still is standing, just from a desktop review perspective. So some of these, I've kind of made a short list of what has to be visited in person to double check. Because I also have a category of likely demolished or likely standing, but I have to actually like double check all of that. Um, and you'll see in this, um, all the way to the left, in this contents pane, I've symbolized by status. So red would be fully demolished. It's definitely confirmed demolished. So you can see where those are scattered around. Um, blue being drained, that's this lake was on the inventory, but this was for the St. Paul Waterworks. Um, so that's been drained since. Indeterminate are locations I have to figure out still, so I don't know. Um, that's, we can see likely demolished, likely standing all on that list. So all the yellow is definitely currently confirmed standing. And uh, that's something we can easily do another pass by, just like driving through these neighborhoods to double check. It hasn't gone down in the last couple of years um, without having to like look through demo permits. Um, and then we still have unclear other things I have to double check. So some of these things, especially the ones that are demolished, I might have to do a little more historical digging into old aerials or maps to make sure I put them in the right place because they're demolished. I can't see them currently, but I can double check on some of these. And a lot of them are farms that were kind of out in the middle of these areas. Um, so this was an old farm and things like that. But this is the general, now the kind of quantity we're looking at on the map. Um, and you can see it compared to the map I sent you out. So I didn't grab, I'm gonna grab my notepad real quick. I have some numbers written down. So I'm gonna pull up that table again because it shows us our totals of things. And what'll be really nice with this is a queryable thing. So I used standardized language putting all this in. So things like status, you can query by that. You can put in, I'll just do an example. Uh, select by attributes, you wanna see everything that's demolished. <coughs> And wait for that to load. Uh, so, okay, we have status is equal to demolished. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Hit OK. And all of the turquoise. And I'm gonna look to, so this list is now exclusively what's demolished, and which actually isn't as much as you would think. We can see on the bottom here it says 24 of the entire list, which is 284. So the whole list combined of that list in front of you and the Shippo list is 284 historic structures in Maplewood. We know it's not complete because we know there's plenty of other stuff in the city that isn't on either list just from personal observation, but this is just what we have on record so far. Um, so that's one example. The other thing with this that I want to do as I get further into it and I have time is take all of our cultural resource reports that we have on hand that I pulled from Shippo and map out where their surveys actually were so we can track, okay, where have inventories actually been done compared to what we can guesstimate from the map, where haven't they been done? Um, I think it's pretty obvious they've been done here, <laughs> but um, it'd be nice to know if they went in areas and said, yeah, none of this is worth inventorying, and we can just say, yep, that's been looked at. It, hasn't, it was considered not worth putting on the list. Um, and so everything that is SHPO inventoried, most everything has an inventory so um, we're an inventory form. So the idea is for every dot, you can click on it and get this pop-up that I've started. Um, and then with that pop-up would be the actual form itself or the report that it's referenced in. So you'd have the form right in front of you. So things where if we're talking about a demo permit popping up and we don't know enough about that structure, we can check the d database basically, see where it's at, see what the history is and if we even have it inventoried. You had a question? Is is it possible to add an image to this box? It is. If we have photographs, historic or current, anything can be attached. <clears> so if you pop it up, and we could, it'd be nice if we could see the photo, the inventory form. Many of the inventory forms have photographs on them as well. So um, would we want to pull up um, 
say from one of the realtor sites that already has it listed or yeah. do we want to go out and take images of this ourselves? One of the benefits of going out and doing your own photo is you get a real update. And what, the sad thing looking through all these and trying to locate them is a good deal of things that seemed like they could be cool and worth looking into as something we could do for NRHP are abandoned or dilapidated um, or straight up demolished. It's going to help us find, like I sent you an image of a, right. there's a home behind um, Forest Lawn Cemetery that I think is the resident, was originally the resident that whoever took care of the cemetery. On the, it's on the back uh, street behind it. That's uh, for that other cemetery up there. Right. And uh, it is it is a classic building out of um, there, Cinderbrook. There also, I don't know if you found the notebook that Anne-Marie Fallsburg did of all the 100-year homes, because I see Cecil's <laughs> farm and the barn on B and Arcade is not on your list here. I've heard of the Century Homes program. I don't know if it's the same thing as what she did, but no, I haven't found anyone's journal or as it had been provided, so. Because they took, she went out and took pictures of all these older homes and it should have been, that's where it kind of, she kind of got off the commission and we all went in different directions. Yeah. If there's any record of that information, that'd be perfect to add. And I will add, too, I don't know. So the list that I, I handed back to you guys, um, I don't know if that's actually the list the building office has, because I still haven't. It sounds like there's more in there than I thought, because um, I totally misunderstood your email. Um, so I still don't have that list. I don't know what list the building office has. Um, so there could be more on here that we don't have in. I would imagine the build. I My understanding is the list we have is the list that's in our 2040 comp plan. Which is what that is, yeah. Faster, yeah. And so the difference is interesting, too. So in SHPO, there were 221 unique locations on the SHPO list. Uh, the local list is 96, but the difference is outstanding between the lists. So somebody did a whole different load of research that SHPO does not have for that list, which is really cool. So that one has 63 local ones that are not on the SHPO list, and the SHPO then has 33 structures that are not on the local list. So they definitely help cover a lot of ground that neither did, but that one is shockingly a lot more um, thorough than SHPO. So it just shows how much SHPO is focusing, like they're getting cultural resource reports focusing on very specific things, and that was really pinpointed more at finding the cool things. Yeah. Laura, if, if uh, people are looking at the screen right now, what is yellow? Right, so you can look at the left here to get, if it's, I don't know how easy it is to see up there, but this is basically the legend. So yellow is everything that's still standing. And, and tell us what that is. Um, so yeah, yellow is all the buildings that I've confirmed are still standing so far. And then all the red are ones that have are confirmed demolished, uh, which we, looking at that list and doing the query, we've confirmed 24 on either list are demolished. And, and the yellow means they're they're how, still um, They're still up, they're still existing. They're 100 years old, or what is it? No, they're... They are still standing. They still exist. They have not been demolished. Okay. Yeah. It, that only that list only gives the status of the property. It doesn't give any real detail. I mean, I'm, the the color coding okay. only gives us demolished, still standing. We still need to figure out what the set is. Right. And so one of the next steps actually is taking the information on the shipo inventory forms and giving like a building date, architect. You know, adding more of that information in. Um, this already took me more time than I wanted to put into it between meetings. It's a, it's a time intensive process. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's gonna be in stages. And so for me, the next stage is where have our surveys been? And then the next stage after that, we'll be adding more of those details from the inventory forms. And hopefully wherever the information is stored for that list that has, you guys have in front of you, because that's a great list and they have notes on there as if there's more behind it. So I, I understand it sounds like they've already gone in their own direction. Well, it was about a two page report that we had to do for each house plus a picture and it's in a, I remember them I remember the thing it's in a white three ring notebook right mm -hmm. they have one I know up at the farm in the basement mm -hmm. they have they're supposed to have one someplace in this complex Richard, you're referring to what Ann Fosberg put together. 
Ann Fosberg, George um, Rasback. Yeah. Uh, so we knew the one we, down by we the, you. Yeah, we know that there's one at the farm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like if I wanted to get more info, the Maplewood Area Historical Society has mm, yeah. the perfect thing to go to. Right. That'd be good. Because in the future, what I'd like to do, um, are any of you familiar with Google Earth? Or have you used it very much? Yes. Yeah. Um, and even if you haven't, it's you just open it and it's really easy. So what I can do with this, basically, is I can export this shape file uh, into a file that can work with Google Earth, which is free and easy to use. And so then you have it in front of you. So yeah, again, if it does come up, we have a demo permit, and we're like, oh, we don't actually, I don't know anything about this, so I'd rather know what I'm getting into at the next meeting. You can look it up, and if it's not in the GEO database, it's not inventoried, yeah, what was it? So access for our Heritage Preservation Commission is great. Right. But does the public have access to this? This lives on my computer. On your computer? Yeah. Um, okay. But the idea would be, yes, as we can develop it and refine it and perfect it and add to it, then in the future, the idea would be to put it onto the website in an interactive format that people can pan around and they can do that thing where they would click on it and get a photo Good. and they would get that form. Because uh, it it's technically all public information. I'm just organizing it currently. Yeah. Um, but that would be the goal for the future. It's just there's going to be some steps in refining and perfecting it before publicizing it. And also steps in communicating with the city to see, do they have the cap capacity to actually put this on the website? And is that something that they can do? So, yeah. Laura, it would be good to uh, compare what Richard said about the book that Ann Fosberg put together compared to this and see, yeah. see what's there and what, what else is can it. we add? Yeah. Or what can I supplement with? I think they might have, she might have, her and Carolyn Peterson might have gotten a sandy lake down on by the waterworks. Right here. Right yeah, here. that's, that's what was drained. Because that, I remember when we were going to high school, the one, they had a horse, somebody walked with the horse out there, and they had to pull the horse out because it was quicksand out there. Um, so with this, too, yeah, if we, if making a GIS version of it available for the public is not an easy option. The other easy thing to do is converting this into printable maps or PDF maps. I could, you could make like basically one large index map of saying, you know, section A, B, C, D, and then you have smaller maps zoomed in um, that show these smaller areas. So it's easier to read, the legend will be on there and the title will be on there and everything. And then you can just put basically downloadable PDFs on the website in lieu of a nice interactive version. Not everybody can do the nice interactive of their city. Yeah. So Laura, you were able to pull this up by searching by Maplewood or what? Uh, I created this. You did create it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so that was me going through that entire inventory list you have in front of okay. you and, and by hand mapping every single one and double checking okay. locations and stuff. So yeah, there's still some refining and adding to do, but this is everything you see on the SHPO list or that list in front of you. And then the next thing would be to check out that journal at MAHS. Yeah. So uh, we want to compliment you and we want to thank you, but how long did that take you to do that? This. Probably a two to three days oh. added all together. Okay, wow. Yeah. Um, but that's why I want to break it down because right now I'm planning a whole conference. So between this and the next meeting, um, I'm not going to be making any progress on this because I'm in crunch time for conference. Okay. Um, but yeah, throughout the year, basically, I, I want to be building and growing this so that we could turn it into a public product, number one, so that we can use it as a tool to be better at what we're doing, and then two, to use it for public education. So maybe. Maybe what we want to do is make the map available to the public, the houses that we actually put on a historical list that are either become city historical sites or national or, mm -hmm. or state. Rather than putting 280 out there, you know, maybe 15 of them went out there and then they become a historical tour people can take by using the interactive map and then they're getting to see some of our finest houses without trying to search through 285 homes that may or may not be relevant. Yeah, well, it can be just uh, refined to that, yeah. I think a long time ago we brought up, if you go over to Roseville, each of their historic houses or what have you, they have a little sign basically near them. We were trying to somewhat mock that a little bit, and pick, but there again, you have to get the 
owner's permission if right and that's like 16 houses it's not 285 they just picked the ones that were the most significant the that, had, that were preserved the way they should be and not converted yeah. like some of these houses are going to have like i i drove past and finally found the old edgerton school well it looks cool except somebody put an eight foot extension on the top and changed the architecture of it so it's not it's not that historical beautiful building it's been turned into a you know oh, 1970s house. conversion I graduated with them yeah yeah and that's she a was good a cook segue. at the school it's a good segue into saying this is not a list of everything that we can consider eligible. A lot of the stuff is pretty like, yep, it was, it just happened to be built over 50 years ago at the time. It wasn't necessarily intriguing or had an interesting history. Yeah. Laura, um, I'd like you to point out some different um, spots or green. I'm looking at Phelan Lake and I'm looking at Right there, uh, the yellow, right Around there, here. Uh, here. that, because that is, that's the, that's the bridge. is it the bridge? No. Well, this is the, um, I think it's the, oh, what are they, oh, I can just click on it. That was, that's there was a, a waterfall <laughs> there. Yeah, that's the, that's this the is the pavilion. pavilion, but the pavilion isn't oh, necessarily pavilion. of age. It was just, it was inventoried with Shibbo, but it's not actually over 50 years old. It was actually, it was put in pretty recently. Phelan Pavilion. On, yeah. Okay. yeah. It just yeah. edges right into Maple. <laughs> but it's, Can you, you know, yeah. uh, pull out a little bit maybe. Yeah. Um, I think uh, David was reading my mind on here. I think there's one, uh, I, um, yeah, that. Yeah, uh, this yeah, that's bridge. Yeah, bridge. pedestrian bridge. Okay, yeah, and that's been replaced. So, right mm -hmm. or renewed no, it's or? Still, it's dead end. Okay. It's still there. You, you can climb. You can climb up on it, but you have to go across the creek the other side to get on it. Okay. It's not. It's there, but it's not a part of the path. Okay. And that's a good point. In dot where 61 is, that's the 45th parallel. This is bringing up a good point of things that still have to get checked in person. That's been demolished. Like yeah, looking at this. The 45th parallel has been demolished. Yeah. Oh, the, the it's still gone. in the world. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, um, actually, you're both right. Uh, where your hand is there, Laura, if you just know about halfway there, move over a little bit. A little down from there. Okay. And right, well, very close to there was the 45th parallel rock. Well, it's, yeah. it's supposedly they have a marker on that bridge. It's not there anymore. That rock somehow. Of, it wasn't a rock. Oh, it, no, I know what happened. The, the, um, the whatever the uh, metal thing that identified that rock has been, you know, somebody took tore it. Tore it off. And, yeah, tore it off and melted it or something. Yeah, that's what happened. You know, that leads me to an example of something else where I need help locating certain things. And it's, I think I'll just, I'll make a list of things where it's like, oh, this is demolished. I think it was around here. Like one is the St. Paul Tourist Cabin sign where it has like an address, but it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so I've kind of given it, like, I think it was around here based on photographs and stuff. Uh, but I'll, I'll basically make a short list of things that need refining with more knowledge than I have. That's privately known, um, though. And that's about that sign. Yeah, that's basically the lowdown. It's, it's where it's at. It's in development. And um, I'm hoping that we can make it a tool yeah, for ourselves and for the public for in the future. It hasn't been gone that long. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you for that work. Wow. Yeah, and I'll, I'll share the data with everybody and with the city um, when it's, it's ready to go and it's all cleaned up. So that, that begs that question. Um, you're thinking we should, or maybe Joe, would you want to put this on our website? Yes, I kind of am on, on the same thought of uh, Commissioner Hughes that we keep working with Laura, we keep working with our building department within uh, our GIS capabilities and narrow down the properties that are, are of most value. This way, you know, 284 properties could be overwhelming. But if we narrow it down to maybe 20 or 30 or so yeah. uh, that are most significant, that are still, once we confirm, they're still intact. Uh, even if there's a site where it's demolished, 
and nothing's been rebuilt there, depending on what was there. Interesting history. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. if, the, if there's any The other left. thing, when you say, you know, some of them have been changed, well, look at the um, building codes. They're, they are keeping, they have to keep it up, so they have to change it that way. They don't can't keep their building in the code that it was built in. So they're going to have to put new, otherwise this uh, council chamber should be over there on 1380 uh, Frost Avenue. And they, these staff members wouldn't have the, all this luxury room. It's right there on the, uh, if you look on the list there, it says. Uh, yeah, it's still on there. Yeah, what does it call it? What do they call it? Though? It's the. New Canada Town oh, Hall. Yeah, yeah well, that's the uh, Gladstone House. Yeah. Yeah, one, one other thing that jumps out <clears throat> to me is some of these uh, designations or recognitions are for bridges. Yeah. Right? Yeah, There's some bridges on there. Right. Yeah, because you got the, the Gateway on. Trail and... Now, there's some bridges right there. Yep. Frost Avenue Bridge. Bridges can be designated. Yeah, there the, are like uh, two or one bridge with two listings, but it's the same bridge, but they said eligible. So okay. The uh, Frost yeah. Avenue one got rebuilt, and they, they didn't rebuild it the way they were supposed to. <laughs> But ultimately, um, yeah, not everything is interesting in this. This is just a totality of data. But by refining it down to what would the public be interested in seeing on a map, that also helps us refine what can we focus on listing? What can we focus on making locally designated or national register? So I think that'd be a good next step. If anybody on here with more knowledge of the history of the city than I do wants to look at that list and go, oh, let's ping that, let's ping that, that's interesting, be my guest. Um, I would also like to, I've collected as much of the inventory data from SHPO as I could at the moment, I have to parse it down into individual. I just kind of did one big batch scan, so I had to cut it into individual forms. But I can make that available so people want to look at the list and go, I want to look at the forms, see what they had. Um, yeah, if somebody wants to do that, then I can, I can refine things as people think, like, let's you know, highlight this one, let's highlight that one. I, that's, I'm going to stop there so I don't go on too long. Well, but, thank uh, you. Yeah, it's That's enjoyable. wonderful. Well, and I think as the weather gets better, we can actually maybe go out, maybe split the list up, and people go just, hey, take these addresses, go take a look at them, see if they're worth taking a picture of, and narrowing it down. Actually, so on that point, the best times to do that are spring and fall after leaf off, because then the trees aren't all in the way of the views. So if you want to take photography, if you want to see the building, you know, early spring, late fall, perfect times. Midsummer, pointless. You're not going to see a thing. So instead of going to Florida for spring break. No. There you go. <laughs> who, go. Who goes there? Very good. Thanks, Laura. We'll let you get back on the, on the uh, DS here. And then we will move to number two, Joe, DEI okay. so, workshop. Yeah, so I didn't put it in the packet, but you have it in front of you. It's the, uh, the map we have here, or the, I'm sorry, the timeline we have here. So just for some background, the city of Maplewood back in about 2016 decided that, you know, as we noticed our demographics change, as we noticed police community relations really came under a microscope, uh, we did a deep dive looking at DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. And at the time we started, it was called the Moore Team, the Maplewood Organization for Racial Equity. And we began to look at a variety of processes around the city about how do we do make sure we're delivering, we're recognizing new people coming in our community, and we're delivering the services in the most culturally relevant way possible. Um, and so you could see back there, 2016, we formalized the efforts. September 2016, uh, the police conducted a, or started a uh, use of force work group, which eventually became uh, what is now known as the MAC, the Multicultural Advisory Committee. And so over the course of the last six or seven years, you could see the evolution until it's become the, to the point where we made it a strategic plan that all employees would receive some cultural agility or equity inclusion training. 
And through the summer, we completed all of that training. So all employees within the city have base equity training. Uh, as part of that, city council and uh, the administration decided that it was important for council, or I'm sorry, commission members and board members to also receive similar type training. Uh, we've been back and forth in consultation. Uh, we are going to have for all commissions and boards on March 9th over at the fire station a DEI workshop. What that will consist of is a broad overview of, of diversity, equity, inclusion efforts as they relate to city governments. And there's going to be a little bit of sort of uh, interactive, interactive work where the facilitator who is uh, he, he, he's going to do he has a consulting business that he has, but he's also in his day job uh, the, the DEI coordinator for Ram or I'm sorry for Hennepin County. He comes highly recommended. He's done extensive work with our fire EMS staff. And basically what he has us do is now that we sort of he lays out the tools and from there try to come up and brainstorm what are ways in each of our commissions where DEI strategies would help us deliver a better product, a more culturally responsive look at, at each of our communities and the work we do. So that um, so we will I'll, I'll ask for a motion to cancel our regularly scheduled uh, HPC meeting for March, and we could convene at the HPC, or we could convene at the DEI workshop on Thursday, Thursday March 9th. I'll make a motion that we um, cancel our Heritage Preservation Commission meeting for March and that would be uh, March 9th, 9th and, and uh, plan to attend the diversity, equity, and inclusion workshop at the new fire station at what time, Joe? That is go, it will go from 6 to 7.30, but we're going to feed you. So if you want dinner, it's, uh, dinner starts at 5.30. At, at 5.30? 5.30 for dinner, and then the program starts at 6.00. Okay, so 530. Uh, any, if you look in the city. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Dave, second it? Second. All right. Um, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and that word will get out to uh, David, or to uh, John. We'll yes, John was also included in the, in the email that I sent out earlier Good. this week. Great. Okay. The, uh, now, the uh, thing do you the, have any on discussion? The city, do you have any when you, when you look at it, anything, any meeting starting, I think six and before, or by six o'clock before seven o'clock requires a dinner type deal. That's why I said dinner. And it's it's included in the in the thing, so I have no problem with it. <laughs> okay, can you get there at five thirty, Richard? Oh, I'll be there at probably 5.15, 5 o'clock. Good enough. Then you get more. All right. Those okay. who come late don't get anything. Okay, that that mm. uh, takes care of that. And we'll move on to unfinished business, uh, demo applications. Joe? There were no demo applications that I'm aware of. Okay. And 106 update in a purple line. Joe? As you see in your packet, as you know, um, we there are two properties under review. Um, we had a chance to weigh in as a, as what's called a consulting agency. Um, I didn't get any feedback from our council or our commission, but we did have prior feedback uh, when Bob Jensen was president of the Maplewood Area Historical Society, and that is under consideration. Right now they're at the 30% mark. They will probably come back to us at the 60% mark and let us know if the considerations for two of the bridges in the area, if they were able to build without making any alterations to those two um, to those two sites. Could you share what what those are, Joe? What? Yeah, there's one bridge that is that is part of the old uh, DS. I'm going to mess it up here. LS and M line that is a county road D, I believe, and then the other bridge is. Um, right over by the Wakefield School, uh, along the, I believe it's the, vent, near the Vento Gateway Trail at area. Okay, good. The uh, Richard. other thing is, we all, you should have all gotten a letter 
on Wednesdays, except for the 28th, I think, is a Tuesday, they ha we have a Purple Line meeting. You should have all got Melinda Coleman sent it out. <coughs> I went last time, and it's kind of comical. They're talking about a bus service, but nobody came on a bus. Okay, and that's good. I found out too, the Gateway Trail was brought uh, or funded by Bruce Vento for a greenway, and it was called Rails to Trails. Nothing about a bus service. Okay, very good. Thanks for sharing that, Richard. Uh, anything else on the 106? Anyone? <coughs> okay, we'll move on to update McCarran's uh, water facility. So this is about a year in the in, in, in the making. Uh, as part of the construction to build a new uh, water treatment facility, um, the St. Paul Regional Water Service identified with the help of their um, historic consultants, identified a, a, a few properties on the site that would have had historic significance. However, um, because of the, the, the necessity to move forward with the water treatment plant, they, were, they had to be demolished. Uh, in order to commemorate the, the historic nature of those structures, uh, we, the, again, the consulting parties, which included us, the City of St. Paul, and the Maplewood Area Historical Society, decided that uh, both a video and a coffee table book that recognized the cultural significance and the historic significance was appropriate. Um, so after about a year of work and going back and forth, the state historic president Shippo uh, signed off on that agreement. And, uh, and here's the little wrinkle. Um, our signing off or, or being a signator of that, uh, the deadline was February 7th. So in consultation with uh, Commissioner Gaspar, who was our liaison, and uh, Chair Cardinal, we decided to sign off on the, on the letter as a signatory, especially since we had already approved uh, accepting the MOU at our March 2022 meeting last year. So we sent that off, and we're a signatory to that MOU. Thank you, Joe. Any questions? on the water uh, replacement or development or building off of Rice Street. Anyone? Okay, thank you. Move on to number four, goal review, Joe. Okay, so all right, in my, uh, I could probably pull this up on the, on the big screen, but it is in your packet. At our last meeting, we talked about three overarching goals for 2023. Again, understanding our capacity, understanding what our statutory authority is. I kind of streamlined the goals down to make them a little more achievable, a little more uh, bite-sized. Um, I could read through them. One, we talked a little bit about it just now, thanks to Commissioner Koski, who's done an excellent job doing the legwork of pulling together and identifying inventory for potentially historic structures in Maplewood. Once we pull that together, call the list down and get a good list in shape, what we're hoping to do is find ways to tie those properties back to our 60 stories, ensure our partners at the schools and other resources are aware of them, and then potentially use that data to identify a property for 2023 and 2024 to continue preservation efforts. Um, as you, the next one is conducting oral histories of recent community members. The tactics for this is to work with the MSA or the Maplewood Area Historical Society to find a grant to fund these. In talking to uh, the executive director at the Maplewood Area Historical Society, he estimated it, it's, it's about a $12,000 undertaking to hire the historian and the oral historian to do the work. We had looked last year at the potential to do a small grant, which are which come up quarterly. So I will connect if 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 um, the commission is in agreement on this goal, I will connect with Mr. Molesky from the Area Historical Society to figure out what at what month at what interval or I'm sorry at what quarter should we attempt to apply for that grant. 
And then lastly, again, work with the purple line station planners. Again, this one's in flux, depending on what happens with that line. But now is the time which is ripe for in the next couple of months, the next several months, they're going to start to do station planning. And so, again, if the line does continue to go through Maplewood, we should evaluate at that point what in their station planning process, what historic events, what historic signage that we want recognized in those in those stations at the actual light rail store, I'm sorry, at the actual BRT stations. All right. Thank you, Joe. Any questions about number one? Uh, Laura, thank you for taking the initiative on that. That was good. It's good, good start or finish there. <laughs> Very good. Any comments for Laura? Any further discussion? Dave, the, David? Maybe some of the properties we identify can fit with the people who told these stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we can find a connection between someone that's interviewed and maybe they lived in one of those houses or tell us some about the neighborhood if they're still around. Very good. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Move on to number two. I think there, there's your tie right there. Um, so those coincide. We can work I, on those together. Any other comments? Well, number two is recent um, oral history of recent community members. That's our people who have immigrated from other countries. So they're actually two different, completely different things. But I think, Joel, if you're willing to keep pushing with TJ on those grants. I personally, I think we should continue to do that because that's... Yeah. And maybe recent could be clarified. When I say recent, I mean from like the 1970s to present, like the mm -hmm. 1970s. Right. We're, yeah. So which is a lot more recent than some of the houses we're looking at in the Gladstone mm -hmm. area. Anything else? I'd like to add uh, on the uh, number two, I, I don't think we should limit it to that first um, bullet. I think we should expand that and uh, probably, Joe, you probably know the uh, makeup of the city uh, residents more than anybody, so maybe we can expand that into um, a few different um, groups. All right. Maybe uh, maybe put a limitation on that, uh, not to have you know a hundred, but uh, maybe ten, ten um, immigrant groups. Is that acceptable? Yeah, everybody? I believe the two. So the two. So it's so just a, off the top of my head and working with the census, Maplewood has a population of roughly eighteen percent who identify as Asian Pacific Islander. Within that population of Asian Pacific mm -hmm. Islander, it's a pretty big mix of people. So we know for sure that we have a, a, a large population of Hmong community members, and we have a large population of Karen community members. But because of migration into mm -hmm. Maplewood for 3M, Boston Scientific, St. Jude, we also have Indian Americans and Pakistani Americans mm -hmm. who are now part of that, part of that group. So, Joe, does the census break that down? Well, the, set, the quick facts numbers don't, but we have what's called the ACS, the American Community Survey, and they do break it down, but I don't know how much into geography, how geographically they break it down. I know they do statewide, but I don't know how, how closely they break it down into certain zip codes or, or what we call census tracts. I could give a call to the state demographer's office to see how closely they link the the ACS data with because they're deep they're they're a deeper dive. Okay. All right. And, and and the ACS I believe is collected at a different time period than the the the, 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 the decennial census. You know the schools might have that. I don't know if the schools have a general breakdown. I could again I can also check with the schools. The schools breakdown is more general, but yeah, because they it's worth a call. It's worth reaching out. Okay, good. All right, that's one and two. And then uh, we know where we're headed with number three on the purple line. And that's a, 
a process that's going to continue with a, a result of continuing or not continuing. Okay. Any other comments on our goals? Um, just David? think <clears throat> we're being a little more realistic this year. I think last year with with five goals and a couple of them were pretty ambitious and dependent upon grants and such things. This is much. Mm -hmm. This is much more manageable. I do. I don't think we should shoot for one property for a preservation list. I think we should, you know, make sure that we do one, but if several others come up, I mean, with this large list as we're working through it and building the background, it might just all fall into place. So, you know, maybe over a two year period, we're doing, you know, maybe three times that many. It's Dave, yeah. that's the problem we had in the beginning, too. All of a sudden, we realized we're behind the eight ball on doing a lot of this stuff. And now it's how fast can we get or what can we do? And then it kind of blew up. So the key is, key is not to get behind the eight ball. Right. And for all of us to pitch in and work our behinds off and make sure this gets done. I, I do you, sorry, okay, sorry. Oh, it's just, um, so part of it will be, yeah, we'll look at the list and we'll refine down to what seems to be best to chase up. But then remembering when it comes to, not, if we want to go to a National Register level, that is a lot of effort per property. It does take a year to go through the whole process for one property. But if it's local designation, I don't know exactly what the process usually is for this committee. The other thing is if we are expected to nominate something, like at least one thing per year, let's have some in our back pocket. So as years come by, we can be a lot better about like getting really on top of the research and like really diving into one property really well each year instead of doing too many properties very quickly in one year. That's right. Then we can make sure we have a quota and we have a list we can just hit one every year at least, at least one, but not five because then we run out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if we, if we really want to make sure we do one, we pick one of the bridges to go with some of the houses because the bridge can't say no. <laughs> So we do know that we have to have the cooperation of the property owner or the business or whomever. Or the city. Or the yeah. city, yes, whoever is a authority. And that's something to, I didn't say before, but with the mapping too, any public mapping we put out, people might want to say, no, I don't want my house mapped. So we might run into that too. Right. The thing is, it's also educational of the residents so that, they get on board and let's put it, let's put it in. Because I heard the Gramsci house on B, they wanted to put their house up. Oh, you don't know that? No. They're right next to the, was the uh, Arlington Hills Methodist Church, which is now some other, they renamed it, right up by Cecil Lill. Yeah. And then uh, the Canaan's house, the, the old sits, Edgerton. The one that sits up on no. That's that's Little's house. That's not even. That's the one that I said isn't even on the, the list. That was um, Little's, and then it was Doctor Worth's house before Cecil's father bought it for Austin. Okay, good. Uh, he grew up there. He worked on that farm, didn't you? Oh, yes. I got good memories. I got the tractor from it. Oh, that's good. The one, the good one. Good. Okay. Well, that completes our unfinished business. Oh, no, number five. Joe. Here number five is we have nominations available for the Heritage Preservation Award. I, um, I looked the other day. We didn't have any nominees as of yet, so I reached out to, again, um, Mr. Malaski from the Maplewood Area Historical Society to see if the society had anyone to nominate. I've not heard back yet. So again, I, I not having a deep historic knowledge of this, this, this community when it comes to this particular issue, I just ask that we kind of call and look through our records and figure out if there's who, what is the best person to nominate for this award. And, and if there's not, we don't necessarily have to make a designation this year yes i think we should uh, we should mention that if there is not any nomination for the uh, heritage preservation award um, for
for this year, I, I don't think we should go ahead and try and pull somebody. I also there. want to be careful, though, that I, I think what I worry about is if you let it go one year, it, go, it keeps going. It keeps yeah. it keeps going, but I think yeah, it's again continuing to work with the society, continuing to work with other folks to determine if there is someone worthy of this award to keep it alive. I don't want to just give it just to the sake of giving because then it devalues the prize. But again, I don't want to. I don't want it to go by the wayside either. Right. You know, when we started it, we also had people that have done it or should have received it, but they passed on before we could give it to them. So we could go back to the, the cemetery. Okay, like that. so that oh. gives us the opportunity to call for any nominations for the Heritage Preservation Award and uh, certainly can look on the website and get the form or you can call the city and we somebody can mail one out to you. Okay. Uh, move on to visitor presentations. I don't believe he's here. We okay. don't have visit, any visit. We have no, no visitors. It, it, and here's something else that should be taken note of. Visitor presentation should be just visitor presentation. If he's here, we call on him. If not, because it almost sounds like if you get, look at that line, Oh, they're only going to have Maplewood Area Historical Society be able to talk. Yeah, no, we, Richard, we can add number two, number three, and number right, four. Right, but it, it should be something here that any public. Yeah, number two, number three, number four after after the Historical Society. Well, let's not go that far. Okay. <laughs> All right. We want to get some people in the in the council chamber. Okay. Anything for the betterment of our uh, Heritage Preservation Commission? Anyone? I, I will say just one thing for the Maplewood Area Historical Society. Um, they do have a, a, a good slate of uh, summer programs, uh, arts on the farm, um, Hmong Language Academy on the farm, and a, a farm to table program. So if you do have kids, grandkids, classmates, um, friends of friends, the, the I, I believe the registration is going to open up here in the next couple of weeks. They're really good programs, really affordable, and it helps get kids sort of you know in the nature, out of the house, away from the iPads for at least a, a week straight. Okay. Anything? Anything else? Otherwise, we will. And those historical society dates are in this you should have got today. Ooh. Good. So we will convene at the new I'm fire sorry. station. I do have one, one thing to add. Yes, Laura. This is just a general announcement if anyone's interested here or streaming. Yep. So the Council for Minnesota Archaeology is putting on a conference for the public and for professionals at the end of February. It's all about archaeology in Minnesota locally. Um, some things stretch to Iowa and North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, but it's, it's open to the public and it's free. It's at the Fort Snelling Visitor Center. Um, it's, the Visitor Center itself is new too. It's the old historic barracks they've just revamped into a new building. Um, but yeah, it's on February 24th, 25th. Uh, 24th, everything's streaming because seating is now full. But the 25th, registration is still open to show up. And there's a lot of like hands-on activities for families, kids. Uh, you can make flakes, I think. They're doing like some artifact ID stuff. Um, and a lot of talks from professionals on what they've been doing in the state. So uh, you can look us up online and register. And if anyone's interested, it's open. Oh, the other thing, too, that we just got notice of is the state of the city's address. It sounds like it's going to be virtual again. Yeah, for the record, it will. It is in the magazine too, I believe. The state of the city is January, March second, uh, at ten a.m. It is virtual. We ask you to please pre-register. It'll likely be on channel sixteen as well, depending. Uh, the reason why we kept the virtual this time around is because we get really good attendance from folks who normally don't come to an event like this. Um, I think the city is really good at doing events like Touch a Truck, the 4th of July celebration, um, summer, summer nights in the park. 
events like this are tough during the day. We're asking people to take maybe an hour, an hour or two for the event itself, plus another half an hour to an hour for traveling across the metro. Uh, that's why we decided to keep it virtual. Our, for, for economic terms, our absolute advantage is with events that are put on by our park and rec department, by our police and fire department. This is not one of them. Uh, plus, it's also an opportunity for folks who normally wouldn't come to City Hall um, to participate. We get a little higher participation virtually. Okay, very good. Anything further? So we will... I'll move for adjournment. Okay. Hey, I have a motion, motion that we adjourn for the evening. <laughs> okay, so we're going to recognize uh, March... 9th as um, replacing our meeting for March and that will be at the Maplewood uh, Fire Station on County Road C and Hazelwood and that again is at uh, 6, 6 o'clock. 5.30 okay. if they want to eat. Okay. We're all set. We're adjourned. <laughs>